Hi, I'm Harry Dent. Just wanted to give you an update since our book was published. Uh, people are not aware that the manuscript for that book was completed in May of 2008 and the book was finally published in December of 2008 and obviously a lot of interesting things have happened since then, mostly in line with our forecast. One of the biggest changes though was that oil prices and commodity prices from July of 2008 into late 2008 collapsed faster than we or anybody saw because hedge funds were just dumping and deleveraging their portfolios and they of course had chased the bubbles in commodities emerging markets so those were the areas that went down the fastest. Our 29 to 30 year commodity cycle in the book is really calling more for a peak around late 2009, early 2010. So we, what we now see, instead of new highs, after oil's fallen from 147 to almost $32, we're expecting more now a bounce to like maybe 80 to 100, maybe a little higher into late 2009, early 2010. So same kind of cycle uh, peak, but not new highs in prices unless we get something extremely surprising happen on the geopolitical front. And that's something I will cover here that could happen. Secondly, obviously, in the book we were saying that the, the markets would bottom, uh, the government would have a strong stimulus program, and very likely the markets would bounce into mid-2009. So that is occurring. The markets are bouncing. The bounce is very strong. Uh, it's giving up very little ground, the markets, but uh, surprisingly, that's actually not a good sign uh, from technical indicators, type, type of things we cover in our newsletter all the time. A, a, a rally like this is more characteristic of a bear market rally where there's just a panic to get back in where people who, who didn't believe the rally at first were short or having to cover their shorts and buy back in to cover those so this is another sign that this rally is not going to last in the book we said you know this rally could go to somewhere between 9800 and 11,800 at first I think we've refined that a bit. I think 9,100 to uh, 11,300, and I'd say the most likely range is probably 9,800 to 10,300. We're looking for this bounce to probably have a little bit more of a correction in late May, early June or something, and then head back up. Our, our, our most likely peak is around July of 2009. We're telling investors, as we said in the book, do not stay in stocks past that. And we've been telling investors, don't sell when stocks were down. If, if you didn't get out early in this downturn, wait for this bounce. The markets almost always bounce, bear market rallies, and retrace something like 50% of the losses. And that's about what 9,800 to 10,000 would put us at. And, and that's gonna be probably the best place to get out. Remember from the book, we have our most important intermediate cycles, our four-year political cycle, and the very powerful decennial cycle in business, turning down, both turning down from about the fall of 2009 into fall or late 2010. This says to us very, very clearly that the worst is still ahead. The market, again, should rally here, but we're going to go to new lows next year. Anywhere probably between 2,000 and 5,000, our best estimate as we had in the book, 3,800. So this rally's not going to last. Real estate is, is starting to come back as we figured it would uh, with lower interest rates and stimulus. But note that interest rates are rising, another thing we predicted in the book. We've already gone for 2% 10-year Treasury yields up to three, over 3.5, three and, and we're going to probably make it closer to 4.5 to 5% next year. And if there's a loss of confidence broadly in the U.S. dollar as China is starting to question, interest rates could go higher. People could start to question the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. government's ability to repay its bonds and obligations, and interest rates could go higher. Uh, also remember in the book, we talked about don't buy bonds yet, wait for interest rates to spike a second time, probably into mid to late 2010. So that's something we're still looking at. The question is how high do interest rates go? Now, real estate, we're also saying, as we said in the book, don't wait. If you've got real estate you wish it sold and things are lightening up now across the country in different areas, sell your real estate by this summer or early fall at the latest. The sooner to be patient. The better. And there's another cycle I want to emphasize that we did mention in the book because it, it, it's, it's not similar to some of the other cycles we have, but it's very important and it's a geopolitical cycle. Now remember in the book, chapter three, we talked about kind of a 32 to 36, let's call it a 34 year geopolitical cycle where half of it's positive and then it switches negative for 16 to 18 years, which would, starting in 2001, 
would continue to point down into 2018 or 19. Within that geopolitical cycle, there is a sub-cycle, 8.5 to 8.6 years, between major surges in terrorist and geopolitical events. Let me just take you back real quick. Early 1993, people forget this, the first bombing the World Trade Centers. It was a smaller bomb. It didn't take down the towers like 9-11, but it was the first major terrorist event. That was early 1993, I think February. Within a month of that, in March of 1993, India had a series of bombings and attacks in Bombay targeted at the stock exchange. So there was a peak in terrorist activity, and then eight and a half years later, we get 9-11 in late 2001. This cycle now looks to peak between late 2009 and early 2010, probably closer to early 2010. This cycle simply suggests that, that not only are interest rates going to go up and stocks are going to over anticipate the recovery and all these things we're talking about and, and we're going to see loans get worse, which I'll talk about finally at the end, but it is highly likely that geopolitical events will get worse later finally, this year, early next year. Why this recovery won't last. Economists have been calling this a subprime crisis. The banks lent to people who couldn't afford their homes, and no money down. Okay, yeah, that's three, four percent of households. Those people have already defaulted, and that is starting to plane out. What's happening is we've been warning for a long time. It's the prime crisis that will kill the banking system. Everyday middle-class people and affluent families bought homes between 2000 and 2006 or seven that doubled or in some cases tripled or quadrupled in four, five, six years. And banks lent aggressively against that. You know, do you know that prime foreclosures have now caught up with subprime and there's many more of those as housing prices weaken over time and as we fall into the next phase of this downturn, which in 2010 and 11 will be called a depression with double digit unemployment, you're going to see more defaults on prime loans and you know what in between there, what do we have? We have commercial real estate falling later and faster than residential. You've got credit cards, which will get worse as unemployment grows. And then you've got the whole financial system that still has hedge funds and leverage everywhere that hasn't fully unloaded. We're at the beginning of this deleveraging process. We're at the bare beginning of baby boomers switching from spending to saving. Do not believe this economy is going to turn around. It will short term. We have good week, uh, weekly leading indicators that look out six, seven months, and they say, yes, we are going to get a recovery late this year. We're saying it won't last. The stock market bets six, seven months in advance. Get out of stocks this summer. Sell your real estate and prepare for the many stages we see of opportunities on the way down. Remember, in, in past videos, we have stressed in the bubble boom, we had bubble after bubble stocks and, and tech stocks in, in 2000, housing in 2005, commodities in, in uh, mid-2008, and just before that, emerging markets in, in late 2007, and finally, treasury bond bubble peaked in late 2008. Now we're going to see successive crashes in different markets in real estate, successive bank crises, different markets here and around the world bottoming in bonds and everything. There's going to be a lot of opportunities. We spell that out in the book, and we'll keep you updated from time to time. So again, thanks for listening. I just wanted to give you a quick update so you knew where we're at. We haven't changed much except our commodity forecast. We've lowered them. It looks like we're seeing a rally that will peak this summer, and, and it's going to be a great opportunity for you to get out and protect your assets and prepare to take advantage of the greatest sale on financial assets of your lifetime.